Hello and welcome everyone to today's webinar. My name is Daniel Shaw-Dennis, Lead Strategic Marketing at Yellowfin. Today I'm going to talk about the ability to automatically surface opportunity and how AI and mobile can now make that happen. I'm going to start by talking a little bit about mobile BI, as you would have probably seen by the invitations. And you know, those of you in the space um, know that hasn't been much on the topic for some time. I'm going to talk about some of those issues and really how the way we consume information has changed. And to close with, I'm going to preview a real breakthrough in analytics. So if you could, you know, bear with me for another kind of 20 minutes or so, I'm sure you won't be disappointed to see, you know, what is going to be brand new for the analytics industry. But first, let me take you back to the start of the decade. I mean, the Twilight Saga was in full swing. You know, Katy Perry had hit songs you could actually remember. And then there was, you know, the big one. The iPad hit our shelves. And you could fair to say that this was a success. You know, it sold 300,000 units on its first day and spurred the world into the tablet space. But what it also did is it led a rush of analytics vendors creating their version of mobile BI apps. And, you know, we had some interesting decisions in terms of you know, app choices at some at stunning new price points for you know, multiple kind of tablets and, and operating systems, etc. And, you know, we at Yellowfin kind of followed suit. We had our kind of author ones consume anywhere um, mobile application. And, you know, for the time, we, we gave a good fist of it. You know, Gartner named us as part of 2011's Hughes Who of Mobile BI. And we tackled some of those kind of governance and security questions that were primarily raised by our customers. And, you know, we had a you know, great interface that really kind of replicated the dashboards and reports um, that our customers experience on the desktop. And, you know, what we and, and everyone else did was really just, you know, replicate that desktop experience. You know, that's what we've done and, and hasn't been much change in the last 10 years. You know, really that experience um, is for analysis and it's for the data analyst. And, you know, it didn't fit the you know the device usage paradigm so if you think about mobile devices and i've kind of given you my my typical morning is i kind of wake up and open my phone and quickly just check my kind of emails overnight um and see if i can actually anything before i get in the office i'll check slack or we move from slack to teams as an example and i'm a bit of a football tragic so i check all the kind of overnight kind of premier league scores then on the train, I'd kind of read through articles. I'd um, you know respond to a couple of emails. I'd check my WhatsApp notifications, SMSs, and I'd read a couple of stories from the morning newspaper. And then when I jump in on my phone as well, I'd kind of pick up a Skype call, SMS. I'd get an Outlook notification of the meeting. I'd, I'd kind of swipe that and close it as I need to. And then I'd you know make the team suffer for some obscure 80s music as I link to Spotify on my phone um, and swipe through um, the music there. And if you think about, you know, the way that this device is being used today, you know, does then replicating that desktop experience make sense? And the answer is no. You know, generally mobile BI apps today are not designed for mobile. You know, why would you want to necessarily kind of slice and dice and do some intricate analysis on real estate the size of my palm and, you know, trying to replicate that kind of UI for the desktop or the analytics ex analyst experience um, on my device? which, you know, I think we can see that generally mobile BI was not widely uh, adopted. And, you know, the reason for that is because, you know, and also on the advent of another big iOS release um, on 2007, that, you know, data consumption has changed. You know, we receive the feed, we receive like a snippet, um, you know, to notify us of something important that happens. And, you know, and that's how we use the device today. I'm reading on the train, I flick it off. Um, you know, I check my, my scores on a, um, early in the morning and um, check if my players have done well in my fantasy team and I flick a bit of you know, an SMS to my friends for a bit of banter around it. And, and, you know, the feed is that jumping off point. And that experience, and, and so that's the mobile experience, you know, really surfacing what I need. I can quickly consume it, what I want, where I want, um, flick it away when I'm done or just decide, you know, you know flick it away if I don't like it. You know, I, I might, you know, like you know, super like depending on the applications I'm using. Um, and then I might kind of comment and share that with, with people um, in my network. And that's the experience um, of mobile today. Let me give you a quick example of an organization that's kind of shifted the way 
um, shifted with the way information is consumed, it pretty um, had a powerful effect on adoption. And um, one that I think we're all familiar with uh, in Facebook, but it's interesting to look at the timeline in Facebook um, for when they really started on that kind of mobile train and they started with mobile support in 09 and they started building around this kind of mobile experience from redesign, specific applications. And then, you know, their organization decisions was around mobile applications. And you can see considerably the jump, not just um, from kind of revenue perspective from 2013 to now, but really when it comes to usage and the majority of users, you can fair to say there, um, I remember, I mean, I'm, I'm not on Facebook often, but when I am, um, it's on the mobile. I can't recall the last time I logged on um, to the desktop experience. And if you think away about the way kind of social media has changed with the advent of the phone, that I've got my, my photographs for Instagram, I can kind of change and filter and, and, and share and collaborate in just a, in a few flicks um, of my thumb. That experience has transformed, um, you know, kind of social media and, and its use uh, and adoption um, throughout, uh, I guess, the world, really. But kind of what does that mean in relation to BI? And I kind of talked about this in the start, particularly from um, an AI perspective. So kind of let's kind of explore that. And, you know, what are we talking about when we're talking about kind of AI um, for analytics and how is this actually going to help? So I'm going to use a term which you might have heard of, um, which Gartner coined in relation to this technology, which is augmented analytics, which is really this kind of next wave of disruption um, that's leveraging things like machine learning algorithms and you know, this kind of broader AI techniques that they talk about transforming how analytics content is kind of developed, uh, consumed, and then shared. And what kind of means from, from our perspective, it's really enabling the technology, enabling the machines to do the analysis work for us, to sift through, you know, copious amounts of data that we'll never get to. And, you know, surface what's important um, for us to call this the way to answer the I don't know what I don't know question because there is just so much out there in terms of data without teams and teams of people you're not able to effectively analyze it you know you want to leverage the machine to do that heavy lifting and go beyond what's on an aggregated dashboard and bring to the surface ultimately what's kind of causing uh, a change um, and it's clear what I'm not talking about here. Um, we see a lot of this kind of new tech. Uh, I'm not talking about the ability to kind of do a freehand Google search on my mobile and say, look, you know, what's my basket size for store and have like a bubble chart pop up. I'm not talking about kind of asking Siri or Alexa, you know, what are my sales for the past year? You know, this is just, you know, an updated way to ask a question. It's not surfacing things that you don't already know. Um, and that's, that's the key here. And what we ch generally ch ch um, care about is when something happens, something we don't know is when, you know, when a change occurs. And this might be, you know, an opportunity, a spike in a marketing campaign for a really small region. If I, you know, look at that below the surface and I can see what effect it's had, I can replicate that across every region. Or if one little element in my manufacturing process um, kind of falls outside the norm, um, it might potentially be affecting my whole production line. So how can I identify that little piece, uh, the puzzle, so I can fix it straight away um, and uh, mitigate that risk. So we really care about when things happen, when things change, and what can we then do um, with that information. And you know, from a Yellowfin perspective, you know, we enable that through a product we brought to market last year called Yellowfin Signals. And Signals automatically discovers and services the most important changes in data as it happens. And this is using kind of AI powered pattern detection and relevance scoring to do that. Now, I'll give you an example of um, one of the ways that, that we use this. And um, in the marketing team, we run signals uh, on our Google Analytics data. So those kind of uh, across our Google Analytics, essentially, if, you, if you've got an organization with a website, you've probably got Google Analytics data kind of running on that and you know we surface that through Yellowfin and we surface that information uh, through our kind of Yellowfin signals product and what signals did one day is it alerted us you can see the alert on the left hand side here automatically to this big spike um, in page views for Bangladesh and you can see Tony there writing a bit of commentary around that um, and when you click on that signal to explore that what then pops up is Yellowfin automatically generates um, essentially what that, that change happened. And in this example, it's a big spike uh, in page views uh, in Bangladesh. 
And when we explore that further, and this is what the signals interface looks like, we automatically generate this um, based on a change in your data. It also shows um, correlated information. So where there is a similar pattern across other signals, it'll show that in your kind of signals window. And if you can see on the right hand side, you can see the correlated data. And this is funnily enough, real data. Um, we had a, a big kind of burst when we uh, were announced as leader in the nucleus value uh, matrix. But also, and this is the interesting part of this signal, is that we had a spike in CPC and that is cost per click. So our paid advertising, we had a big spike in Bangladesh. Now, this was quite odd to the marketing team because we don't do proactive um, digital advertising in Bangladesh. So, you know, we saw this um, signal the next day, we called up our agency to go to ask what was going on here. And they quickly told us, oh, sorry, we forgot to put the location settings on there. Um, thanks for telling us this has now been fixed uh, and sorted out. So you can see an example of, you know, this is signals automatically finding something that's outside the norm, um, servicing it. And then as a team, we've then actioned and done something about it. Um, now, that was um, obviously an example of, of, of signals there. But, you know, the other part of that is how does this affect you know the rest of the business and particularly the sales business who are now having kind of Bangladesh leads coming down the pipeline uh, and what's the best way to explain this to them like now generally sending them a little spike in a bar chart with you know CPC for Bangladesh the wider audience you know doesn't probably have the knowledge specific to um, kind of digital marketing um, but the best way to kind of explain that surge and try to assure them that we haven't changed our target market is to do that kind of via a story where we can kind of just in plain English, kind of explain what happened, explain the context in an easily consumable way. Um, and so we brought a product to market last year um, called Yellow Pin Stories to kind of do exactly that, create data stories, provide the content and that long form narrative um, for better insight. And we did that for the story on Bangladesh. You know, as a, if you're familiar with kind of LinkedIn, Pulse or Medium, the format is is much like that. I'm not going to, this is not a, a product demo of this. I'm just going to kind of give you a context around it. But it's a way you can easily consume kind of data-led story, which had the Bangladesh signal and the reports all within there, all secure, um, that can kind of be consumed um, by the team. Now, if we didn't have products like signals and stories, this issue would have kind of popped into our monthly meeting with our digital agency when we ran through all the lead sources, which means we've kind of flushed a month of digital spending um, on a country that we weren't targeting versus we're able to fix this up kind of the, the next morning and within 24 hours we had a resolution. Now if you think about this, this is an ideal case um, to get an alert on your phone, you know, instead of um, waiting 24 hours, which we jumped on a desktop and, and found this out and then put the wheels in motion, um, we would have been able to solve it within a few minutes. Uh, and that kind of one day turnaround would have been, um, you know, a much less spend um, from that perspective uh, as well. So you can imagine that, you know, mobile is an ideal delivery mechanism for this. You know, you have this kind of AI driven technology that can automatically trawl through your data for statistically significant changes and send you an instant personalized notification of those kind of the changes in that data. And then think about kind of marrying that up to the mobile consumption format, you know, the, you know, that design element that is a consistent feed, think, you know, your Facebook, your LinkedIn, your YouTube, we get this feed of information that's relevant to us. You know, we can bypass the things that's not interesting, engage with kind of stories and then kind of take action uh, within there um, and share that with the community. And, you know, all in a way that's kind of built for uh, the consumer. And that's what we've built in a completely kind of reimagined yet quite familiar experience for analytics. This is the new Yellowfin mobile app that I'm about to show you. You know, the ability to really take action on every change in your business, basically anywhere. Um, and with the combinations of those kind of products that I've um, just kind of quickly showed you, the ability to really discover, collaborate, and act on insights and really kind of um, create an inclusive and an effective kind of data culture. And, you know, the Yellowfin mobile app is about combining Yellowfin signals to automatically do that data discovery, you know, have the ability to create engaging stories with data in a secure way uh, and have kind of Yellow, Yellowfin's kind of industry led collaboration um, all kind of binding that together. But that is delivered through essentially a simple timeline feed for that kind of curated mobile specific experience. And that's the difference here. You know, you can see the change, understand why it happened and do something about it, you know, wherever you are. 
So um, I'm going to then kind of flip to my phone and kind of show you this in action. So if you bear with me one second, I've got some uh, emulation software I'm about to uh, fire up. And fingers crossed, let's have a look. And it's in action. I'm just going to share my mobile. Let's have a look. Put the code in. Boom. This is all done live. Excellent. And here you have my phone. And you can see my sports apps, Tragic Game. And you can see the little Yellowfin logo. I'm just going to close my window here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure you can see that and open up the Yellowfin mobile app here. So there it is, Yellowfin mobile. I'm just going to log in with my face. Excellent. And what you can then see here is that Yellowfin timeline. So here I've got my timeline where I can see everything in my Yellowfin ecosystem pertaining to me. You can see um, you know, a signal that has been um, sent to me. Um, I, I can scroll through here. I've got a story that I've written. I'll show you that later. I can see um, all the interactions. Um, I can see the comments from my, my team, um, all within an easy kind of swipeable kind of format here. And I won't scroll down there, but you get the picture. Everything that's important to me in a format that um, I'm very familiar with that I can swipe and engage with as I needed to. So let me scroll back up here and let's jump on this signal here. And, and here is an example of a signal notification uh, in mobile. Now, the data set that this is looking at is actually um, liquor sales for Iowa. So um, if you do, you know, after this webinar, I want to play with the mobile app, that's a real data set that we've had to play with, run some signals on, produce some stories to give you a feel um, for the application. So looking at the kind of sales in um, liquor sales in Iowa, um, I noticed there's this big spike in kind of the premium category um, of liquor sales. So if I look at this signal, I can look at it, to, I can see you know, the, the percentage spike. If I kind of press that here and I just press it with my finger, that tells me the, the number that sits there as well. So I'm gonna open that up and look at the signal uh, window within my application. So I've got all the information about the signal here. Um, I can see that kind of spike uh, in place like so. If I scroll down, um, you can see that I've kind of collaborated and put a comment on Ivan to check out my, my story um, and you'll get to that in just a second. Now, all this is generated automatically from Yellowfin. This is the Signals product that's showing through mobile, but it's just the interface that's just kind of really built for this. So it's alerted me to this change. Um, I can see the relevance of that particular spike in relation to the whole data set to understand how important this is. Um, Yellow uh, Signals also um, looks at that spike and looks at other dimensions and measures and see what might be affecting that to help you answer the why. So I've got a whole lot of automatically generated visualizations and, and a natural language generated um, explanation of what they are to help me understand you know, why that spike occurred. Um, and all this is automatically generated and I'm flicking through each one as you can see down the bottom here um, to engage kind of with this um, uh, signal. So what I also have here um, is a story. And this is a story I wrote um, about this particular um, signal. Um, so you know, what this signal actually um, kind of did in, in relation to the category and what we have here. So let me kind of jump into my story and you can, I, I won't read it out a little bit, but I'll give you the gist of it. Now I don't mind the whiskey on occasion and the whiskey drinkers out there probably know um, Jim Murray he writes his uh, kind of almanac every year and, and nominates the whiskey of the year. And um, what he did, and I'll, I won't read through that, but um, a few years ago he mentioned or kind of nominated Crown Royale Northern Harvest Rye as the number one whiskey for that year. And um, looking at some of the data there, it had a pretty big effect um, on this particular whiskey and the brand in general. So if we scroll down here, included a signal in here that that premium category that spiked and some of the correlated data there, which is a little bit hard to see on, on my phone, but um, suggests that Northern Harvest Rye was the, you know, the, the uh, whiskey that enabled that spike. And if I scroll down here as well, um, at that exact point in time, when that was announced, it had a big effect on sales um, in terms of volume sold there, but it also had an effect on um, dollars. And essentially, you know, that announcement um, just had a huge impact on Crown Royale being number one and whiskey sales in Canada in general. 
Um, but just trying to explain that to the audience and, and just and talk a little bit about that in a way you can kind of easily understand uh, and remember it. Um, I won't have a route to that story, but you get the idea if you can easily consume this on a way that, you know, I do on my phone. I'm scrolling through a story as I would on the train in the, in the morning and consuming that data um, in a very, very kind of easy way. Um, so just taking a little bit through the interface here, um, and I'll go back to, I've got my timeline, but I can also access my timeline from here. I can look at my uh, signals list um, that is based up here. I'm gonna look at um, signals that I've done a few days ago. And from here, I can swipe you know, left and right. If I don't want the signal to dismiss it, swipe that way, and I'm just moving my finger here. And as you can, wait, I see my finger, but you can kind of get the gist. Or I can you know, unwatch and watch a signal as well. So the gestures and the, and the movements that we're used to when we're using this device. And likewise, I can also jump into one of the stories. And if I scroll through here, I see Ivan wrote a story around kind of um, you know, Ryan Reynolds and um, his uh, partnership with uh, Aviation Gin, which once again, I can read a consumer. I wanted to, um, you can see up the top here, um, I've already added some, some commentary um, for Ivan, which for the team here, I can then kind of share that with other members of the team, etc. So a lot of ways you can really kind of interact with um, this information, with this data uh, in an effective way. I can come into a signal, I can assign it, I can own it, et cetera. Um, you know, swipe, point, pinch, just the way that, you know, this device was meant to be used. So with that, I'm just going to close out the mirroring and go back to our webinar. All right. So really the Yellowfin mobile application the things about it, it's immediate, you know, it's about providing that immediacy of the feed to view any changes in the business from a signal to, you know, commentary from the CEO, whatever that is, is in your pocket. And from that, it's convenient. You know, it's, it's built in the way that we're naturally using this device and it aligns to those patterns. And it's actionable, you know, I can comment, I can post, I can assign a signal as you saw there. And that experience kind of pushes users towards action and, and actually pushes users towards engagement with data with you know ultimately as analytics leaders we're, we're looking for this and if you think about you know your own experience and and I, and I look at mine here and you know that experience that that user experience that mobile experience really impacts our use so think about how much more music um, i've listened through through you know spotify's algorithms throwing up you know new playlists for me um it's scary to think my Uber Eats uh, takeout bill since um, this has come into my pocket. Um, it's delicious, but scary. Um, and thinking about all the ridiculous videos I've consumed just because, you know, the right things are being served up to me through my YouTube feed. And then thinking about, you know, what this analytics adoption, you know, next time you see Cram Rail, you'll probably remember it's kind of number one. Um, and you think about, you know, how many missed opportunities, you know, the ability to, to surface information that, that, that isn't there or, or it's stuck you know, behind a dashboard and think about what it could possibly bring to you know, your larger organization with you know, kind of this you know, in their hands. Um, and really that kind of concludes um, today's webinar. Thank you so much for um, you know, sticking with me, listen to me. Um, if you would like to have a go with the mobile app, um, there's a link on the website. We'll send you a nice uh, personalized invitation. And if you'd like to try um, any other products that you see here, such as Signals and Stories or the other products in the Yellowfin suite, please um, jump on the website uh, and have a look. Now, we are probably just on time, but I will take um, a few questions. So there is a question panel in the um, Bright Talk kind of box there. So if you did have any questions, um, please pop them in. And um, anything that I'll miss, I will try to kind of get to now. Um, first question, how does the mobile app deal with security? Um, good question. So there's a couple of ways, as you would have seen there, um, I've kind of enabled um, kind of face recognition. You can enable your PIN. Um, you can take that off and have you put a password in um, every single time. Um, you can do that if, if you wish to. Um, so there's multiple ways that we uh, enable security on, I, I guess, the device itself. And within Yellowfin, you are a, a single named user. So you've got whatever kind of row level restriction. So for example, you can only see you know, 
information from kind of one country, you'll always have that limitation, whatever report, signal, et cetera, you, you consume. And you have um, content level restrictions as well. So you might not see certain, uh, certain um, signals or certain stories, whatever that, whatever that may be, uh, as well as um, certain restrictions on um, type of functionality if, if that's been set up the way. So there's multiple ways that you can apply um, a level of security kind of at that level. Um, can you disable uh, the phone uh, for a user? Yes, uh, yes, you can. Um, so centrally, your uh, administrator can disable your logon. Therefore, if you lose your phone and you're ultra, you know, worried about someone kind of recreating your face or password, uh, you can do that as well. Um, are signals and stories separate products? Um, so signals and stories can be kind of purchased as a separate product uh, in uh, within the suite. We do uh, combine those products in in a package. So every all like the signals and stories products that you saw there are completely integrated. Um, we also have you know dashboarding, data discovery, data prep products as well. So they can be kind of purchased together, um, bundled together, uh, or you know separately depending on on your needs. So that kind of concludes uh, the time. Um, there were a few more questions there. I will kind of jump on those and reach out to you directly uh, after the webinar. Uh, thank you for your time today. And wherever you are, I hope you have a great rest of your day.